Today we're continuing with our series on the Arundel Sound 1723 THX system. And so we've already got the left center right set up. Today we're going to be installing two Arundel Sound 1723 2S subwoofers. Now these are not like brand new in a box. These have been probably to some different content creators. So everything's not going to be packaged perfectly, but I want you to see what's in the box and then we'll take a look at the subwoofers themselves. So inside the box, we've got our white gloves because these do pick up fingerprints just because of that nice finish. Got our paperwork right here. So we'll lay that off to the side. Got our power cord. And right below here, we've got two speaker grills. So we'll show you that in just a second when we get those added. These are magnetic, just really low profile. So these have two subwoofers in them. And I'll show you that in a minute. We'll talk about all the specs. And then right up the top, I'm just gonna show you real quickly. Actually, there is a, another power cord. So right up top, I just want to show you how thick this padding is. And then we'll flip this upside down. So you can see they've got padding on the corners to protect this. And we've got really, really thick padding. So typically when I'm unboxing stuff, I don't have somebody helping me. So what I'm going to end up doing is I tend to flip this upside down. And then we'll flip it back upright. In just a second. If you're doing this by yourself, just easy way to do it. Flip it over on its side. I'll go ahead and remove these little corners just to get those out of the way because they're going to fall off anyway. Hold that back. Now, I usually hold the bottom so it doesn't slide out. Then you can just lift the box right off the top. Again, you can see we got tons of padding all along each side. So let's see, we got the woofers on this side. Amplifier is on that side. So I'm gonna flip it towards me. I'm just gonna lift up, remove these. Then we can undo this down here. Like that. Usually what I'll try to do is just get this open enough so that it will sit over the edge of the legs like that. Lift it back up. Let's take a look. Now to me, this is just a super nice presentation. You see this really nice cover here. It's got their Arndahl logo. Logo. But I like the size of this. It's super narrow. It's not real wide. So we've got, we'll get a little close up here. All right, so I went ahead and put the gloves on because I know the more I touch this, the more fingerprints are gonna get all over it. So let's take a look at the subwoofer. So this is a 13.8 inch driver on one side, but this is what they call a dual opposing subwoofer. Cause if I flip it around, you'll see we also have another one on this side. So these are going to be firing out. What's nice about that type of design is it really helps to prevent like the subwoofer from, from moving at all. They kind of cancel each other out as far as inertia is, is concerned. And so you could probably put a glass right on top of this while this thing is going nuts and the glass is just going to be super, super sturdy. So that's just a really cool design. And by doing that, they claim that this is about the equivalent of a 21 inch driver because you've got two 13.8 inch drivers. So the front is just incredibly just minimalistic. I mean, we've got just a little tiny logo down here. And then while we're here, we'll go ahead and show you. what that looks like with the speaker grill on there. So as you can see, these are magnetic. Just a really slim profile there. So 
I like that a lot, man. It's just really, really clean. And the material that they use on this is just, I love just touching it, to be honest with you. It's just really smooth. And then we've got these beveled corners right here. So just a really beautiful design. About two years ago, I reviewed the Bigger Brother, the 2V. So that was a, a vented enclosure. So it had a port on the back. So let's go ahead and take a look at this amplifier. Now this is, I think I haven't mentioned this in our in the previous video. This is probably one of the, the coolest looking subwoofer amps I've seen. I mean, it's gorgeous. Just the machinery on this. But we've also got some DSP and we'll hook that up in just a minute. And I'll walk you through uh, the controls there. But this is the Avalanche 1200 IQ. So this is a 1200 watt continuous amplifier. Again, we've got digital DSP here, menu button, enter button, and then this right here, little control wheel, will toggle through some of the menu. We've got a 12 volt trigger right here. So that'll allow you to connect it to, say your AVR or your processor. And when you turn it on, it'll turn this on. And when you turn it off, it'll turn this off. It's like an auto setting. Here's a service port, but you probably shouldn't need that. And then we've got both inputs and outputs for the unbalanced RCA as well as the balanced XLR. Now when possible, I always recommend using the balanced XLR inputs from your processor, but most AVRs, if you just have a regular AVR audio video receiver, those typically have RCA subwoofer outs. So you're gonna to need to use these unbalanced RCA inputs here. Now what's nice about having inputs and outputs is let's say your AVR only has one sub out, you can come out of the AVR into one of these subwoofers and then out of this subwoofer to your second subwoofer so you can kind of daisy chain those. And the reason why you can do that is because we've got this built-in amplifier here. All we're trying to do is get that LFE signal from your AVR into the amplifier here and then we can send that same signal to another amplifier that's gonna amplify it in the second subwoofer. And then of course down here, we've got our three prong IEC port as well as our main on and off switch. Now down at the bottom, we've got these nice thick rubber feet here. Let's take one of these off just so you can see them. They've got the Arndall logo on them. So these are nice, they'll keep your floors from getting scuffed up. Another thing I really like is just the design of this. I mean, even down here, they didn't have to put this little edge in here but I just really like the way that looks. It's super clean, really, really narrow. Like I said, I mean, you can see right here, not very wide at all. And so I think this is going to fit in a lot of rooms where you don't have, you know, a lot of space. Like my room's only 13 feet wide. So this will fit in here a whole lot easier than having the two of the ported versions. Now, before we take a look at this digital DSP to see what options we have, I want to tell you about some other options that Arndall Sound offers in their subwoofer lineup. When it comes to movies, there's nothing like having a subwoofer that is capable of pressurizing your room and adding massive tactile response that you can feel. Whether you're looking for a compact sealed subwoofer like the 1961 Subwoofer 1S, its bigger ported brother, the 1723 1S, or their flagship monster, the 1723-2V, Arundel Sound has got you covered. And with a risk-free 60-day audition period, free shipping, one-year upgrade program, and a 10-year warranty, you've got absolutely nothing to lose. Check out Arndall Sound to take your home theater to the next level. Okay, so I don't have anything plugged in right now as far as the XLR cables or RCA cables. We'll hit the menu button, hit it one more time, and that takes us into the menu. So if I use the little wheel right here, we can select either RCA inputs or XLR. So I'm gonna be using XLR, so I'll click enter. Up at the top, you have options for your levels. We've got a reference level, master level, and your input gain. I'll hit menu, turn the knob, and we can go down to the crossover. We've got various options here. We've got a couple of different EQ modes. So if I hit enter, you can see EQ1, EQ2, EQ3. So there's three presets that you can save on this. So maybe you'll create one for music and maybe one for movies and maybe one for nighttime. Got a low pass filter bypass, the frequency, different slopes, subsonic filter, and lots and lots of settings in here 
for you to kind of tweak to your liking. We'll hit menu. You got a parametric EQ. Now this is a tremendous feature. You can see here we've got seven parametric EQ settings that we can add. So where this is handy is if you use something like REW and a calibrated microphone, you take some measurements of your subwoofers and it'll let you know what you need to change in order to get the flattest frequency response. And so you'll have seven different PEQs that you can adjust here. We'll back out of that. Come down, we've got our input turn on. You've got options for how you want the subwoofer to turn on, whether it's in RCA mode or down here in XLR. So I will be using this 12 volt trigger. We'll back out of that. You got an option for setup. And again, here, you just got tons of functionality. Now this is something, again, I haven't seen this much control on a amplifier, especially a plate amplifier like this. So this is super, super incredible. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Now one really neat feature, look down here, all the way at the bottom, you got display rotate. If I hit enter and change that to 180 and hit enter again, and then back out, notice this menu is now upside down. And the main reason for that is if you're leaning over the back, uh, once this is installed, this makes it really easy to see these and still be able to control them. So we're actually, for now, we're going to flip that back over. Change that back to normal. Got to back out of the menu and then come back in. So now make sure you turn all the way to the bottom because sometimes there's some additional options at the bottom. So we'll back up. And then of course, if you want to set it back to factory reset, you've got an option there. Now to make this subwoofer even better, Arndall Sound also has an app. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. This is the first time, so we're going to tell it to use the Bluetooth. It's going to detect the device. So here you can see we only have one subwoofer turned on. If we had both of them turned on, we would see those together. And it looks like we could even group them if they were both turned on. So that is pretty slick. But right now we only have control of the one sub. But one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this. Instead of this weird name here, we're gonna do 1723 sub, and we'll just call it left. And click the checkbox over the right. It says, are you sure you wanna modify this? Absolutely. So now we know that this is gonna be the left sub, and then we can rename the right one once we get it connected as well. Now it looks like we are gonna be able to group those subwoofers, so that'll be great. That way we can control some of the settings paired together. So we'll go ahead and click over here and see what options that we have. So up at the top left, you can see we've already got it selected as XLR. If you wanted to switch that to RCA, you can do that here in the app. So what I'm seeing already, I really like just the cleanliness of this. And I think this is gonna be much easier to use than going through the actual menu settings on the amplifier itself. So we've got volume control right here. So we can go up to 20 decibels all the way down to negative 19.5. So we'll put that back at zero dB. Kind of in the middle, you can tap the plus to incrementally increase the volume and hit the minus over here to reduce that as well. So down at the bottom left, you can see we're on the levels tab. If we click on settings, so here we are in the settings menu. We're gonna go briefly through this, just show you the different parameters that you have access to. This will not be a complete tutorial on how to use each one of these items. So we'll just go through these, the level menu up at the top left. We've got our reference level. We can toggle that on and off and that'll disable the actual manual level that we can adjust right here. We've got our options for input gain. More than likely these would be not grayed out if we had the subwoofers plugged in and our AVR turned on. But since right now I just have power going to the unit, we don't have any options that we can select. Here's the test tone down at the bottom. So we can hear that. And that just lets you know that the subwoofer is on and working properly. We'll click settings at the bottom, then go to crossover. Under EQ, we've got options for EQ 1, 2, and 3 sealed and EQ 1, 2, and 3 vented. Now the reason we have options for Vented is because this app does control all of their subwoofers and so they have sealed as well as Vented. So in our case, we would only be using EQ 1, 2, or 3 in the sealed mode. We'll go ahead and click that again. If you want to enable the low pass filter bypass, you can toggle that on and off here 
or manually adjust the low pass filter frequency right here. If you're utilizing a low pass frequency, you can adjust the actual slope right here from 6 dB octave all the way up to 24 dB octave. A little further down, we've got options for a subsonic filter, the subsonic filter slope. We've got variable phase adjustment from zero to negative 180 degrees. We can invert the signal. And we even have options for time delay all the way up to 50 milliseconds. Click the settings button again. Now we'll go into the parametric EQ. Now, as I mentioned earlier, here's where things get quite exciting. If you're utilizing something like REW and taking measurements of your room, it will let you know what frequencies you need to adjust and how much you need to adjust. And currently all seven of these bands are disabled. So to enable them, we've got a toggle switch right here. So let's say we took measurements of our room and this subwoofer had a boost, say around the 50 Hertz range, maybe it was six dB boosted. We can scroll down here. We can say 50 Hertz would be the frequency. And then we want to reduce that by six dB. So when we look up here, we can see this really long curve. And as we adjust the Q, that is going to narrow that frequency. So again, this is where REW would be great to let you know what the Q should be, as well as the frequency and what gain you need to adjust. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and disable that band. We'll go back to settings and go into input auto turn on. So again, these are the same options that we had earlier. There's that 12 volt trigger using XLR1, and we've got lots of options all the way down here to the bottom. Going back to settings, we'll go into setup. And here in the settings page, we've got lots of options. So I'll just scroll down here. We can see we've even got a wake up threshold. That's actually pretty cool. Basically what this allows us to do is certain AVRs may not trigger your subwoofer to turn on at all times. Maybe if you've got it really quiet, it just doesn't sense it. So you can adjust that sensitivity. Maybe you want to take it to high so that it kicks on more easily. Down here, you can even see that rotate option as well. And down at the bottom, we even have control over how bright the LCD backlight is. We'll click settings one more time. And the last option, if we wanted to reset all of those parameters back to factory default, we could reset those from here. Down at the bottom, the third option would be the devices that you have hooked up in your room. Again, I only have one subwoofer connected right now. And you can see that that is our sub left that we renamed earlier. When we get the other one set up, we'll call it sub right. And then the last tab at the bottom, we've got access to some support help on their website. I'll be posting more videos on the Arundel 1723 series, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and I'll have links to all of their products down in the description below. Well, as always, be blessed, and we will catch you in the next video.